Right, morning everyone. Uh, if you are watching this video, you will have searched for Seko Hinoki, I'm sure, and or Seko Hinoki Bonsai, and I'm sure not found much in the way of YouTube videos with these trees within. Um, There's, there's there's a couple of resources out there. Not much though. Bonsafi have a couple of videos. He's got a couple of videos on Seka Hinoki trees. He focuses more though on propagation. Uh, there's there's a little bit on the internet. There's there's one forum specifically where the owner of that forum talks about his journey with the trees, but. Other than that, detail and information is, is, is really quite hard to come by. So I'm going to start this video with a, a warning. Um, I don't know what I'm doing with these trees. And so anything you see in this video, please do not copy. If there's anything that you feel you may want to use, please do your own research or you know, wait a month or two from the date I posted this and then drop me a question in the comments and ask me how things have gone because the work that I'm going to, go, I'm going to do today, I'm a little bit apprehensive about. I don't know what the outcome will be. I, I don't feel fully confident. So that's my warning out of the way. I've spoken a little bit in other videos about these two trees specifically. So this was the first Seka Hinoki that I purchased from a bonsai nursery just on the outskirts of Tamworth. Um, it cost in the region, I think it cost about £65. It wasn't the one I wanted, but I only had a certain amount to spend and I bought three or four trees. Uh, so I had to sort of rein it in a little bit on this one. However, the second tree, this one, was the one I wanted. Um, and this was purchased for, as a gift for me at Christmas time. So, and I think the this tree was about £105. So they're not affordable for a beginner like me to make mistakes with. Because of that, I have been a little bit apprehensive about doing anything with these, and I've done as much reading and watching videos as I can do, but I'm still a little bit nervous. So, as good fortune would have it, I recently went to the Birmingham Bonsai Bonanza, which, if you haven't been, Imagine a, a car boot sale, but for bonsai, pre-bonsai, starter trees, pots, etc. Um, an interesting experience. It was a little bit smaller than I thought. And I got there, it, it opened at 8am. I got there right on 8am thinking I need to beat the rush. When I arrived, there were people leaving with big bags full of trees. So I was probably a little bit late in, in hindsight. However, as I was walking around, just as I was about to leave, what caught my eye but these two little beauties. Um, so, looking at the, the difference between them, I was expecting these to be quite pricey uh, and when I check the labels and you won't be able to see because it's nearly came off these were £25 each so £50 for the pair which I th I snapped the guy's hand off um, initially my thoughts were fantastic I've got a couple of trees that I can almost have a trial run before I repot these two at the back uh, but then upon further 
examination, and I'll bring the camera in in a second. There's probably more potential with these for propagation in the future. Uh, and I'll give you a, a, a little bit of a look shortly. So today, what I'm going to be doing is sharing the little knowledge that I have on, on Seko Hinoki. And please, as I've said, treat it with caution. I'm not an expert. I'm not even a beginner. I'm an absolute novice. But I'll share what I know. So if, like me, you've struggled to find videos on the subject, uh, you, you've got something, at least. And then what I'm going to do is, is repot them. And that could go a multitude of ways. So I'm going to bring the camera in. I'm going to give you a closer look at what second okies look like in detail and, and talk you through the little snippets of information that I'm able to share. Right, so first thing to be mindful of with these, and these are quite, if I turn it to the side, these are quite flat. Well, this one certainly is quite flat tree, and this one's actually got you know good spacing between the branches but first thing to note is these have incredibly dense foliage and what can happen very easily and you'll see it's happened this side and I believe it's happened this side because it was facing the Sun like so is they would die back relatively quickly and anything that doesn't have sunlight reaching it will risk, if I look underneath this middle branch here, will risk dieback occurring. So one of the things that I've noted you must do is using ideally a pair of tweezers is get in there and remove this brown foliage from, you know, if I open this up, you probably will see better. That's a good example, actually, where my thumb is. There's a lot of dead foliage in there. You can see it's relative, it will rub off with my thumb, but using a pair of tweezers, first step really when, when I guess, refining your secker is to get in there and remove all of that. So that's gonna be the first step that I'd take today. The second consideration needs to be, because this occurs, you need to try and expose as much of the foliage to sunlight as possible. So, I mean, you can wire these quite easily. In fact, the, the first tree that I purchased um, was wired uh, with some very, probably 0.5 mil wire. and they hold the shape well I've removed the wire and it's 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 stayed nicely so ideally you want to keep your design in mind these are really really slow growing so any chops that you make you need to be conscious that it may not grow back in that area Now, when you are making or removing branches, if you do search Bonsai Fire's video, these are incredibly easy to propagate, and he's propagated a lot. And this was the thought that came to my mind, actually. I mean, this, this one here, for example, we've got several branches here and propagation in, in line with what Eric has done is just snip rooting hormone into his mix, which is predominantly perlite with some cocoa quarium, and leave them. Uh, he's been experimenting actually with the differences between trees propagated in a greenhouse and outdoors, and he's noticed some slight difference in the color, I believe. But they are easy to propagate. So for me, with these trees, I'm not going to do anything today. 
but I have got potential propagation in mind because these trees are quite challenging to find. You know, there's a couple of websites now that are selling these for £25, but they are literally, if I can crudely show you, they're literally that one branch that's been propagated into a trunk, very narrow, with no branching coming off to the sides. So getting good material, good Seca Hinoki material, is quite a challenge. And then last thing to be mindful of is these are really, really well suited to the UK, which is where I am. They will handle temperatures down to minus 20, which is much, much colder than we experience here. I think during the winter, we hit minus three, minus four, where I am at its coldest. And the two that I've got, I didn't protect them in any way, shape or form. I left them exposed to the elements and they thrived. So, yeah. So what I'm going to do now is clear the foliage up. I might include a, a snippet of footage from there, but that's going to be pretty straightforward. And then look at what the roots look like. Now, this one I'm a bit concerned with. You should be able to see in there, there's an enormous root looping up and out the soil and back down again. Um, but we shall see what we've got. So as I said, I'm not going to record too much of this. But I've got a pair of tweezers here and I'm just going to go in and remove any... Browning or dead foliage it's on the branches. So a little bit of a time consuming task, but hopefully that shows up on the camera there. Quite an important one. So I'm going to go through both trees now and remove everything that falls into that category. You know, there's some obvious problems over here. So I'll take these away. And then when I'm left with nice, bright, healthy looking trees, I'll come back and look at repotting. So just a quick update, I've, I've just finished going through and, and removing any old branches, it took about 10 minutes or so. One tip that made it much more easier was simply turning the tree on its side so you can see underneath the foliage and the brown foliage immediately catches your eye when you're looking straight on, you know, because it's the deep foliage that the sun isn't reaching, it's quite hard for your eyes to, to notice it too. So I would I would encourage you, if you've got one of these, turn it on its side, and then you can get in there and remove, I was going to say remove most of it. There's a little bit here, so I'll just tidy that up. And then as I say, we will look at repotting. Okay, so the first one I'm going to repot is the one that appears to be the most challenging uh, with the surface roots coming out of the top. So let's take this out and have a look. Wow! So hopefully you're able to see all of the roots that we've got growing here. Um, for some reason 
much more than I was anticipating. Let me just have a quick look at the second of the two, because these are very, very light. Okay, so that one's a bit less, but still very healthy. Very, very wet. Uh, couple of slugs. What do you do with slugs in your garden? I don't really like killing anything. In some sort of spider egg sac or insect egg sac on the bottom as well. Uh, yeah, I don't like killing anything. So these little slugs, they're going to get thrown onto the garden to live their lives. Okay. So let's have a look what we've got. Now I could find very, very little information on repotting these. Uh, almost, in fact, I didn't find anything when it came to preferred soil. It was void. There was one forum where he spoke about a certain soil mix that, that he was using, but it was a, a pre-bought mix from somewhere in America. So not the most helpful. So I'm just going to work through these. And see what comes out. So my immediate concern is I'm being very, very, very gentle. And yet, it's pulling a lot of the roots. Assuming these are live roots, it's pulling them away very easily but in for a penny it's quite a fibrous soil as well I mean clearly the guy at, at the bonsai bonanzas had great success at propagating these so they can't be that much of a challenge it's just how little information there is online. And I think because of my other two trees, I just started to overthink things. Um, I've not, I've not uploaded, I've not created a, a video for a couple of weeks now. I've been incredibly unwell. Some sort of virus that Uh, left me debilitated in bed for one day, one whole day. I couldn't stand up. The pain in my joints, my hips, was uh, so severe. Well, it's interesting. Half a half a branch, an actual branch. Um. So yeah, for for two weeks I've done nothing. I, I came out and watered the garden. I think once or twice watered the plant, sorry. And then we had a storm, a high wind storm. So winds up to 34 kilometers an hour, which doesn't sound much, but it caused havoc. And the fabric greenhouse, I had to run out here at 8.30 one evening, it was it was taking off, it moved about three feet, despite being pegged in, um, and it was just about to blow over to 
to next door's garden. Everything inside smashed. Luckily, there weren't any any plants or trees, but there was a lot of pots. Um, so there's a lot of mess, unfortunately, up that end of the garden, um, which is going to need to be rectified this weekend. And hopefully, the weather is quite nice though. Hopefully, spring is finally going to materialise properly. The lawn will dry out and then it can be mowed and it can start to look a bit more like a habitable garden. Okay, I'm just going to work through these and I'll come back short. So, tree number one. <laughs> it's too much to hope for, wasn't it, that this would have a nice root base. We've got some... awkward junction here and we've got this big root that comes out below hits a right angle and goes off to the side and that's it so we've got a root plane at the top of which these awkward ones form part of and then we've got this enormous amount of roots below that all stem off a right angle uh, not ideal. However, right, I'm somewhat pleased at the beginning that I stated this would be used for propagation purposes. So I'll tidy these up a little bit uh, and repot, but I'm not too worried about the Nabari. It's not going to be a long term display style tree. So I'm just going to quickly do the other one see what condition that is in now uh, i'm not expecting much different to be honest and then i will be back so this one looks a little bit better famous last words i know but it looks to be a little bit more how you would hope the roots would flow from a tree. They do seem to have been at some point placed in this sort of biodegradable Hessian style pot. I know some people use them to root cuttings uh, and then they just up plant, up pot them. Uh, I'm not a fan myself. for no, no specific reason. So, let's work through this slowly. And we'll see what we've got. Tree number two, done. And the roots are, they're not as bad as the first, but they're still pretty chaotic. Uh, some zigzags, Lots of crossing roots, some curving under, some straight down. So as I say, I'm not, I don't have any plans of this ever becoming a developed display tree. So I'm going to tidy, I'm going to tidy them both up just a little bit. Uh, and then I'll run us through, in fact I'll do that now. So the soil I'm going to be using is, as I've, as I've mentioned, it's hard to find what soil should be used. So this is a premix, a mame mix from the guys at Kai's and Bonsai. It's a little bit more refined than their standard mixes. So it should be better suited for, for these sort of small trees. So this is what I'm gonna use, and I'm actually just gonna put them back in the, the, the pots that they were in. So let me get set up for that. Right, so 
as I said, these are going straight back into the same pots. And these small, small pots do have a lot of holes. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of screen, drainage screen in the bottom. Apologies if you can hear sirens. Some, something is clearly happening close by. So, loose square. Pop that in. It's a little big, is it? Yeah, just a little bit too big. So recording these videos for YouTube makes the repotting process just that little bit longer. I think realistically, there you go, like so. I think realistically, I could have repotted these in probably about 10 or 15 minutes. Um, but setting up the camera and making sure everything's in place to get it in shot just adds a little bit more time, as well as thinking about what I'm going to say. I'm not sound a total doofus so that's the drainage screens in and i've got a little stanley toolbox which i keep all of this in the top pouch it's actually quite handy right then so in terms of depth they're going to pretty much fill the pot so I'm gonna put a probably about one centimeter layer of soil in each and we also seem to for some reason attracted a family of seagulls for the last two weeks if you can hear them squawking that is that is why he's moved into the neighbourhood. Right. I'm not going to wire these in. That's one. I'll fire that up in a second, and the second one. So the, the one I've just potted, I did actually remove some of the roots. So if I ever did want to turn that into a usable tree in the future, somehow, uh, I've left the option available. Okay, tree number two. While I'm doing this, I found out what I was doing wrong with my other videos. I had the wrong setting on my camera. And then when I was editing them together, just using an app on my phone, I was using the wrong setting for that too. Hence, some of my videos have been... Uh, <sighs> awkward angles. Right, so I'll just give this a... Prod down, remove any air pockets, get it in between those roots. This one doesn't have that many, so it's not a major task. I want to get it as settled in the pot as possible. If it's moving too much, either the roots are too much of a mess or there's air pockets. 
somewhere. And I'm quite happy with that one. That's okay. And this one of the two has more roots. So you need to be a little bit more conscious. And hopefully you can see on the camera, as I'm pushing down, the air pocket's being filled and the soil has filled that gap. So you can, you can see the work you're doing. It creates a, a bit of a crater. So I'm going to go all the way around and do this. And there's those awkward upward facing roots just starting to appear. Yeah, I'll say there's maybe scope in the future to keep this. It would it would involve putting the tree at a, a significant angle to try and rectify those upwards facing roots somehow. Not impossible though. Right, that is the finished repotting and slight tidy up of my two second Oki. As enjoyed by the seagulls. All right, let's give these a water. <laughs> I definitely do not want to do that. So you can see some of the brown sediment coming out of that soil. That is pretty normal. And we're gonna soak them until it runs clear. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. The sun is just appearing, so these will have a nice time to bask. So as I said at the beginning, if you're watching this looking for instruction, please wait a month or two and then drop a comment in in the video and ask me how these have fared because I just don't know. I've pieced together stuff that I've found. Uh, hopefully it's been helpful. If you've enjoyed this, please let me know and I'll catch you soon.